we are familiar with this passage, but we are tempted to play down the <coughs> second part. It is often used positively, but out of some false notion of correctness, the downside is played down. It is a perfectly balanced picture and has no sense if both sides are not in that perfect equilibrium. There is no point to the story if that is the case. And the fact is that the Lord is giving a warning. Time and eternity are linked, and the quality of one impacts on the other irreversibly. With regard to the way in which we are judged, it does actually happen on a daily basis, even though we do not think. The way that we can change the quality of life of a person by our attitude to that person, or by a word at the right time, is something else. One time, a poor tramp was seen on the ground in the area of the Vatican by John Paul II. He approached him and wondered what his story was. It turned out that it was a priest who had left the priesthood years previously and messed up everything. <coughs> Moved by a divine inspiration, the saintly Pope immediately asked if he, the tramp, would hear his confession. It was the starting point of his return to the practice of his priesthood. One day I was talking to one of our guests in the monastery who had made a good retreat. She was a doctor, and she mentioned something that had happened to her some time previously. She had noticed that this person would not get a lift from anyone, and she was puzzled. She invited him into her car, and she realized why. When he turned his face at one point, she noticed that the other side of it was completely necrotic. She knew the term, being a doctor. <coughs> it was decomposing. And there was an awful odour filling the car. She understood why that poor person would be shunned by all and sundry. Eventually, she put him where he wanted to go on his journey, got out of the car and came back into the car. And what was not her surprise, when she found that the car was completely full of an odour of heavenly perfume and roses and some kind of incense. And she realised that the Lord had accepted as done to him what she had done to this poor, marginalised human being. On a daily basis, we can have an encounter which will be positive or negative each time. The attitude is soon picked up. Indeed, one notices that with regard to our dealings even on a professional level. In Ireland, compared with some cultures, quite often one is pleasantly surprised by the extra bit that one finds, e.g. shopping or whatever it might be. There is still that gratuitous extra bit thrown in quite often. It's part of the culture and is actually quite precious. We're not just numbers, clients, customers, we are human beings. 
And that is something that wherever we are, we can cultivate and use it to heal people as they go in pain through their day, because most people are hurting. And a little thing can go a long way in easing the pain. Joy needs inventiveness and skill, but it's doable. Pain is easy to emit. Now, I want to go into this Gospel and its consequences. It's something which, just yesterday, came to me from somebody who was in church, who wanted me to read. And I looked at it and I thought, this is modern, it's just happened, and it's a modern version, in a sense, of this Gospel. So are you sitting comfortably? Then I shall begin. The name of this gentleman is Randall Rathburn, a research mathematician in Oregon. He had a severe car crash on August the 30th, 2002. So I just quote what he has to say. It contains something which I want to bring in and amplify towards the end. It's a point you might miss, but I need to underline it because it's kind of central, more than you think, in one specific area, the sacred area of marriage. He died and he was being taken somewhere. I could sense that my descent was quickening, faster and faster. It was like free-falling down an empty elevator shaft. I was being taken to hell. It was so terrifying that the human mind can't comprehend the experience. I was bound in three chains, and a very powerful spirit was holding me. It was this thing that was five feet tall, but maybe three or four hundred times as strong as man. An extremely loud scream burst right beside my head. The scream came from the demon and was so loud it almost deafened me. It was a voice that was screaming like a jet engine, an angry, defiant voice, and I recognised what it now was saying. Is mine. Is mine. His name is Liar. 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 And I am taking him to the lake of fire. Rathbun, who was working on the F 22 stealth fighter for TRW in California at the time, Formerly a brilliant student who had been valedictorian of his high school class and was mania cum laude in engineering at Montana State University, says he believes the entity taking him to hell was one he'd glimpsed many years before. During the early 1970s, after he was, in inverted commas, born again. He says its head was mishappen, not human, like a skull, but not a skull, with skin it was dark leather and almost black, and looked like somebody who'd been dead for a thousand years. Pure hate. Eyes that were deep-set 
with two fiery points of light that were like ice picks when I looked at them and they pierced mine. He had a desire to kill me. The engineer had a history of problems, starting with a molestation when he was a seventh grader at the hands of an older abusive student, which he believes opened a door to evil. He called them weeds. And graduating later in life to a pattern, now this is the first bit I want you to listen to, to a pattern of viewing soft core pornography, which led to visiting prostitutes on weekend nights, even notice as he attended church services on Sunday. Emotional issues, a near nervous breakdown, a voice that told him to take his hand off the wheel of his car just before he crashed into a concrete pillar. He was in a downward spiral even before the crash. He says his wayward lifestyle began by, listen again, what he viewed on the internet and worries about others citing a recent survey by a major polling company, the Barna Group, for Proven Men Ministries, showing that more than half of Christian men view pornography. <coughs> he calls that terrifying, based on what it nearly led him It was only after Randall cried out to God that something changed. <coughs> why, why is this happening to me? But the Lord drew him from the shaft. <coughs> Three scriptures to do with the wages of sin were suddenly displayed before him. Not just words, but speaking to him happened to be given Romans 6.23, John 8.34, and Galatians 6.7. <clears throat> I could see a long, long trail, now listen to this again, of sexual sins. Worse yet, I could see how I had deceived myself. I had truly deceived myself into believing that I could willfully sin, yet God's grace would cover me. In other words, <coughs> he felt he could sin, but everything would be okay if he simply asked God to forgive him afterward. A little sin won't hurt. God will understand. <coughs> Rathburn related to the reporter that as he fell down that shaft, the atmosphere had become crushing beyond reckoning. It began to get very warm and oppressive. I began to have trouble breathing. It was as if thick smoke was starting to smother everything. He heard a roar and screams. It was the worst screams you can imagine. Thousands of people scream. Now listen to this because this is from the horse's mouth. People dismiss this, even people of value, like the theologian Hans Ulf von Balthasar and his follower Robert Barron popularized a version that there is a reasonable hope that all will be saved. Now uh, this is from someone who's been there. He goes on. No, 
millions of people screaming. Did you read what the children of Fatima saw? They were children, and they were our eyes. Our Lady wanted to warn us through them. And do you know what Our Lady said after showing them that place? You have seen hell where the souls of sinners go. And you know what she said? Because there was no one to pray for them and to make sacrifice for them. That means that our pain is redemptive if offered up. That means that our Lenten penance is actually able to save souls who all the time, all the time, all the time are going somewhere. Two per second, roughly. Very few prepared on the level of the globe. The screams were so awful that you couldn't bear them. Just one scream alone <coughs> would make the hair on the back of your arm stand up. I was hearing millions of them. They were screams of torment, screams of pain, <coughs> screams of suffering, screams of obscenities. Now that means that even in the beyond, a soul in a negative mode pursues that mode <coughs> and carries on with obscenity and swearing and cursing, and in this case, cursing the light that it will never see. It's frozen in negativity. Screams of rebellion, but most of all, screams of hell by the damned. And damnatus means lost. The roar of the flames was constant. It sounded like continuing rolling thunder of flames consuming but yet not consuming. And that echoes very strongly what the children said when they saw souls being tossed up and down without weight or equilibrium. I had heard fire while living on the earth and had seen a hundred foot flames incinerate hillsides in a few seconds. But the flames on earth were nothing compared to the sound I was beginning to hear. Now this word comes from your man. More than a single sin, it's a pattern that causes us trouble with God. He emphasizes a pattern. Yet God, so tremendous in mercy, had pity on Rathbun, and after a moment in which everything went dark, God wanted him to know what despair was. He suddenly found himself far above the pit which he describes as 3,000 miles above the earth. So God spoke to him and said it was the suffering of Jesus, the precious blood, that had saved him, that had given him that second chance. In his rendition, the Lord told him he had a major decision to make, and that he would be given the time he needed, returned to earth, to make it. I trust you, my son, the Lord intoned, with a voice that Randall claims had so much authority, total, absolute authority, the whole place just shook with that authority. You hear that voice? and know that he is the most powerful force in the universe. Hearing that God trusted him woke something inside of me. I don't want to hurt him, said Rathbone emotionally. Mm. So I just want to zoom into one spot the question of marriage 
<coughs> and this by now generalized access to impurity in the privacy of people's room. In the question of marriage, it's virtual adultery because it's looking at someone else's intimacy over which one has no right. And it's infidelity with regard to the wife that one alone may see. And it's ruining many a marriage. Eventually, the wife picks it up, directly or indirectly. It's available as any operation on a computer or on a smartphone is available. <coughs> it's the same act as looking up a research. But it's morally very different and is an invitation to demons to come in to the mind and to pollute it and to give patterns of behaviour which usually become habitudinary and irreversible. It's vitiating even adolescence, because at a very early age, they are enthralled by all that's in the cybersphere and teach each other how to surf. That's what we're up against. Pollution in the air. Do you think that's the most serene way for a soul to go through its short innings into eternity? My friends, we're up against a cosmic battle, and each time we, too, gladly watch an impure film, we're playing the devil's game. Just a little bit of sin doesn't matter. <coughs> Beyond the veil There is a place Beyond geography Where pain is heard no more Where pain is all that can be heard Forevermore to be the echo Of the last unvoiced call no larynx made Where fade the very sounds that matter For a while For matter there is none And where these lie Yond sleeps sweet bounds There is a rest that is best taken now little field of stones, each silently awake upon strange rest. A story vast hangs on your chiseled words, and quietly a pendulum rocks onwards at the last. Amen for a Amen, so shall it be. Amen for a Amen, it shall not be.